Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we take this apart. Now, if you haven't already seen the previous video I made about this Dutch VOC Walloon hilted sword, I encourage you to go and check it out because it gives a little more context, well, about the sword itself, but also why I'm, I want to take it apart in this video. But just to give you a bit of context, if you don't want to uh, go and check older videos out, the grip on this sword was replaced in very relatively modern times, actually quite modern times. It has these two modern uh, aluminium washers and this cylinder, this wood cylinder that's just basically a wooden, a broom handle, basically it seems, that was plopped onto the tang. And this, well, first of all, as you can see, the whole assembly is rather loose. So that's uh, a problem. And then this has no real value. It's not some work that had been done maybe in the 19th century, in the 18th, so that you can think, oh, okay, it's not original, but it still has authenticity or value to it. So what I would like to do here is take it apart and figure out well take some measurements i'll do that off video of course but i want to basically substitute it with a um, modern version with a reproduction if i can make one or if i can get one made of the original um, grip luckily these are referenceable there are a few of these swords still existing that i know of with their original grip one of them is in the Skapevart Museum in Amsterdam, which is the ship, the Maritime Museum. And one, if I'm not mistaken, is at the Military Museum or the um, ex Leger Museum, which would be the, I don't remember what the name is now, but it's the Military Museum of the Netherlands. And they have, um, this grip is, in the original version, it's a little more contoured, so it kind of has a bit of a, bulge to it towards the center and it has a beautiful metal wire wrapping which actually has kind of a pattern to it uh, i've only seen a black and white photo of them so um, but it looks very nice so what i like to do is kind of substitute it with its original style grip um, but also i think it's going to be interesting to see a walloon hilt hilted sword taken apart um, yeah, uh, it might be interesting for you guys. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of documentation about this happening. Uh, so perhaps it's something that people will be interested in. And the reason I can do it so easily is, in this case, that the tang section, that normally the end of the tang that would be peened over this pommel, is not. It was already, obviously, at some point in time, the sword was disassembled. So there's no need for any destruction, destructive um, intervention here. You can simply unscrew this little screw here and the whole thing should come apart. So, well, that's it for context, for context and let's dive into the disassembly. Okay, time to take apart a Walloon hilted sword. So I'll just show you first where we're starting from and what the current situation, the starting situation is. As you can see, the tang doesn't reach the end of the pommel, so it's not pinned over. So it's not going to be a problem to slide it out. We won't have to like work on the pin or anything. Um, this could be a problem in the sense that it could be a problem if you ever wanted to repin it because you'll either have to draw out the pin so it can come beyond the pommel. Uh, yeah, and that would obviously mean changing an antique blade to an extent or working on it in a way that is not destructive but altering for sure. But I am not too concerned because as you can see here, there's actually quite a bit of uh, empty room here. So even with this handle here, the pommel can actually slide up enough that I think would free a couple of millimeters if I ever wanted to repeat it. However, that's our starting point. Uh, I think we can get started right away. And the first step we're going to take here is to uh, work on the screw, which, as I mentioned in the previous video, is already slightly loose, so it shouldn't offer too much resistance. There we go, you heard a little click. The screw, obviously, if you can see it, has a unusual head to it. This is likely because we're pre 
standardized screw heads so there's no uh, slotted or Phillips uh, screw here but it's out let's take a close-up look at it before we touch the sword so here's our screw sorry for the uh, dirt let me see if I can get it in focus there yeah so a small threaded screw three or four uh, threads there and that's a uh, 1700 screw now for the rest everything should be fairly simple because it's just a matter of removing this um, hook that fits in this second hole on the pommel and then as you can see the whole hilt assembly comes loose and now we would have a problem if the um, tang had been peened was still peened in place but since it's not we can simply remove it as you can see here so we'll take also a close-up look at the pommel um, what we see is it has these two holes of course there's the threaded hole you can see signs of the thread I think there maybe on camera you can see them too this is where the screw uh, fixes in place and this other hole is instead you can see it it's angled upwards this way this is where the hook of the um, uh, of the hilt fits in place the pommel is actually rather heavy it's not light it's mostly full unfortunately in here I mentioned the blade had been kept in place with some wooden shim by whoever I assume made that um, ugly uh, ugly grip so we can remove these for now but as you can see the pommel isn't empty it's not like a um, uh, a shell uh, in the shape of a oval it's a full uh, metal uh, ball let's say with a hole drilled uh, or yeah somehow a hole is fashioned through it you can also see here it tends to be square kind of matching the size uh, the size of the tang and then you can see it tapers down towards the hole at the end and here it's much smaller and round it also has some definitely old cracks in the area where it would uh, meet the peen a very it's not really a huge crack it's not uh, structural I would say it's not damaging the pommel at all but this may be a sign of some old uh, work done to it who knows and that's all there is to say I think you can see it's definitely not mass-produced it's um, irregular um, I think this perhaps also falls in line with the debate that there was some time ago about antique swords being perfectly symmetrical uh, antiques versus reproductions let's say you can see here that it's all a little bit wonky and uh, kind of lopsided but still it's very nice and this definitely provides balance I have to say this I'm not sure how much it weighs uh, unfortunately I don't have my uh, weighing scale here uh, very stupidly but it's not light let me tell you okay next thing we need to do is remove the uh, grip here this as you can see if it wasn't clear enough that it was a modern job this um, grip substitution uh, you can definitely tell because of these modern washers that have been added to kind of I don't know why maybe to fill the gap there um, but they didn't work very much because there's still a huge gap anyway let's remove the grip let's see if I can do it easily on camera but I'll need to push a little against there we go okay grip comes off I won't even show you this because as I mentioned it looks like a, a broomstick that has been hollowed out so that can go away as long as I don't drop it on the floor and now we can remove the other modern washer which here someone actually cut to fit the tang so some things never change and uh, you need to adapt 
when uh, working on antique weapons. And now the moment of truth, I would say, is where we can uh, slip off, at least, let me get it in focus first, the uh, Wulun hilt from the blade. So, if you were ever wondering what a Wulun hilt looks like when it's off of its uh, assembly, this is it. It actually looks way more symmetrical. It kind of makes more sense once it's off of the sword. I always found the Walloon hilt to be um, to look rather messy when it's on the sword. You really, it's something I love about it. But all these bars feel like rather asymmetrical and uh, weird. Um, now that I have it in my hand like this, off of the sword, it makes way, makes way more sense. This kind of falls down very. Um, symmetrically actually and then you have this extra bar here to protect the side of the hand so it all makes sense let's take a quick look at the hilt assembly here just so you get an idea of what we're looking at what's interesting is you can see the hammer marks on the inside the um, uh, swordsmith or whoever created this obviously this happens on antique helmets as well or cuirasses or any kind of armor what you didn't see didn't need to be uh, finished to perfection. So you see the hammer marks and uh, sign of uh, work of days gone by. Um, we see again the shell uh, guard here. Um, what's, what can we say here? What's interesting? Well, it's one piece in the sense that you see it's not two separate uh, shells uh, together, but it actually is because if you look here, we can actually see a uh, solder line. It's here, and then it seems to continue here as well. So it seems that uh, these were perhaps two metal um, uh, shells that were um, welded together and then uh, um, finished to a smooth finish. Um, obviously this would have been covered by the leather washer anyway. So another thing I want to draw your attention to while we're looking at a close up are these lines, um, these decoration lines that kind of give it that shell vibe. It's very interesting because you can see the lines actually crossing here. So it's a nice precise work, but I don't know if this was done on purpose or if it was just in the um, trying to work quickly, the lines overlapped here. It's always nice to speculate on these little things about these swords. Um, we can see the upturned, very simple quillen, the uh, soldering and welding line here. It's a really beautiful piece of metal, I have to say. So if you have the chance to ever hold one, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. But let's now get to the blade. We'll remove this washer and oh I can actually already see here something very interesting on the tang. But first let's take a look at the blade. Although I might have to remove this because I think it's throwing foam. I think these pieces are throwing off my focus. Okay let's go. So the blade we saw in the previous video already, so no need to see it. Um, again, speaking of precision and perfect symmetry in antiques, look at how one side is a little bit um, wider, so the tang isn't perfectly centered on this sword. It's actually a little offset to, to the right over here. And even the tang is not perfectly straight, so I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. But yeah, you can see it actually kind of bends down here and then corrects back uh, over there. So yeah, I mean, uh, it's already a settled debate. I mean, people have been talking about it for a while, but antiques were not perfect. Let's take a look here at the tang really quickly and see if we can see any sign of it being broken or if the pin was removed at some point. And I can 
I don't know if you can see it, but I think there definitely is a sign of that because look at, I'm sorry if this is all, um, I should probably get a macro lens here for, for stuff like that. So please bear with me, but there we go. If you look right on the left, on the bottom left, let's say so on this side of the tang, there's a little lip, which is actually quite sharp. So something was potentially broken off there or a cut or something at some point. And it's definitely not been done recently because it has had all, it had all the time to re-oxidize and rust. It's all inactive rust now, of course, it's just patination, but you can see it's there. Okay, but let's move to what I spotted as soon as I, um, you can see the hammer marks here too, it's really quite beautiful. Um, but let's turn to what I spotted and I'm also uh, very curious. There seems to be a maker's mark um, right here under, just under the Ricasso. It's, I don't know what it is. It looks like one of those Among Us uh, aliens, vaguely. There we go, that's in focus. It's almost like a circle with some kind of oblong thing with a dot in the center. I mean, you can see it, of course, no point describing it. I don't know what this is. I'll be doing some research. And if you have any indications or know what this maker's mark is, please, please, please share it with me. But yeah, this is um, a Walloon sword taken apart. Um, very beautiful, I have to say. The blade is extremely light and um, balances somewhere. Uh, balances somewhere around the first third, I would say, without considering the hilt and everything else. But it's a very, very manageable and nimble blade. Okay, let's get to putting everything back in place. Um, we'll start with the washer. This is obviously also not its original washer. I'm not even sure what direction this was in. Yeah, this direction here. Okay, then we'll go for, well, basically reverse, uh, reversing all our steps from our taking it apart. I'm not too concerned with this at the moment now because I do plan to remove these modern additions anyway and yeah as I mentioned give it a more dignified and historically accurate uh, grip so I'm not too concerned about putting it back together uh, with you know the washer in the right direction or anything. Okay now this is a little can get a little bit wonky I think because the whole thing here needs to be kept in place while we reach for the grip. Um, the holes here look kind of the same, so I think the cracked side, yeah, this was before at the top, so we'll just follow that. There, we'll push it as far up as we can. And now it's time for that weird second washer. And our pommel. So, uh, let me see, this goes this direction. We obviously want to have everything uh, properly aligned. So this is the hole with, yeah, here we go. This hole aligns with the screw and the one underneath. Okay, there we go. I'll turn it over so you can see. We can now place the um, hook here of the hilt in its place push the pommel down. Actually, I should have probably used the wooden shims right away. That was a bit of a... There we go, this feels like... Uh, it's not a dignified <laughs> way to keep your old sword together, but it kind of works. So there we go, we'll put this back in place here. Okay, make sure everything is as tight as it goes without forcing it excessively. And now we grab our screw. 
make sure it aligns with the hole and screw it back in place. And there we go, the Walloon hilt is back in place. And that was it. As you can see, uh, provided the pin isn't in place, it's a very straightforward sword to disassemble. Obviously, if you do own an uh, unauthentic Walloon hilted sword, I urge you to do whatever work you want on it with great, great care. These swords already are bordering way out of the mass-produced 19th century swords that you can kind of play around with if you don't uh, have a lot of fear. These already start being a bit of a different beast, I think, and you really, really do not want to damage them. So I hope the video was interesting. I'm glad we found a little secret in there. And um, yeah, and I'll keep you updated with the um, restoration project for the grip and we'll see how that turns out. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon in another sword video.